Let's go. Um, Done. All right. See, Regen, I see. Probably 42. How's that one going? How's that one going? All right. So, um, what the will I need for this? I have a bunch of stuff here already. Uh, we will need this beautiful torture device. There we go. All right. Uh, what else? Well, obviously, I will need to bring the beer in. Let's see. Ugh, let's go. Feels a bit lighter. Maybe not. Maybe not. There we go. There we go. All right. This way. All right, the boys are ready. Oh, let's see. First things first, we need to get the test going. Gotta need the testing. That's a beautiful thing. Remember how much they need there. All right. So let's see what we got. Let's get the first one out and oh it smells good though it smells good so far all right first bit was kind of like stuck in the top get out which doesn't really matter i'm just gonna get the density but i wanted to try i wanted to try some of it too There we go. All right. Hmm, <clears throat> the bubbles already nice. Let's see. It was ten, I think, right? You're like nine point five, I think, density. Let's see how much we'll get this time. All right, bubbles, get out! You're gonna interrupt me there. Poof. Let's see. The bottle washing stream. Just you wait. There will be some of that too for you. Special for you. All right. That goes. Zero, one, two, three, 3.5. Okay. That's nice. That's good. That's a lot of it went down. Let's see. I feel like it could go a little bit lower even, maybe. I'm gonna check, just in case, actually. I think it should be fine. So we basically got from 10 to 3.5. So... That was uh, 6.5 down. Shows 3%. I really doubt it's gonna be 3%, to be honest. 3% alcohol, I really doubt it. I really doubt it because last time it also was showing like 3.5 or like 4. It was a bit stronger than that. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so I kind of doubt it. 
Kind of doubt it. All right. Let me see. I'm just going to check real quick. I think it should be good enough. It should be good enough. The density. All right. Means ten eleven percent start starting density should be. Oh, uh, what's the? No, it can be from two to five actually. So, yeah, that's good enough. That should be good enough. Yeah, 20 30 percent from the start and since the start was uh, uh since the start was 10 yeah we kind of like there we kind of in that in that range so i would say that is good i would say uh, that is good then yeah? all right well, I mean, I'm going to kind of heal it now, to be honest. If it's light, it's not that bad either, as long as it stays here, really. Like, I don't really get the obsession with the, the super strong beer, as long as you have, you know, like, the taste is good. And the taste is full. If you at the body of the beer, then it's good enough for me. But I feel like this measurement is not exactly that particularly precise I would say because it always shows it like a very light and then I kind of don't really feel it being that light when you actually consume it I haven't measured the very first the very first one I was making that one I haven't measured the density either so I don't know how strong that was but I did actually also everything by the book so it was supposed to be kind of the same stuff <laughs> My friend with that stuff got shit faced. Holy shit, that was insane. So I'm pretty sure it's good enough. Pretty sure it's good enough. All right. So your density measurements we don't need anymore. This should be a good then. There still might be some like kind of leftover though. So gotta be careful with that. I'm getting the right amount of sugar and stuff in it. Right, let's see. All right. No sourness. That's good. Good. The bitterness is there. So that's all good. Smells real nice too. I think we're good. I think it should be good. The bitterness is quite there. We'll see. And the bitter, bitter aftertaste too. Which, this one is called uh, the Amber Bitter. So, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. Not exactly IPA, but still. A glorious dialogue. How we do them on. So it's still kind of there. All right. Good. Yeah, bitterness actually even kind of like still lasts for a while. That's nice. That's good. And now, um, mm, it's kind of, it's just more scary about like the, the sourness stuff. Like if it's sour, that means, you know, it got infected by lactic bacteria and stuff. And then there is already different kind of fermentation going, the kind that we, we don't want. This one was fine. Be like some hints on the second time, but I'm not sure was it exactly that or was it something else. Kind of not sure. So now we're just gonna prepare the bottles still, because even washing the bottles is uh, not exactly being done with them. Kvass. Yeah, kvass is like way more bitter, uh, way more sour. That's how it's supposed to be, because kvass gets the the wild fermenting 
So it has some yeast, but it's mostly like not the beer yeast, it's just regular random yeast, whatever you get. Even the one from the air works really, if you, if you want. <laughs> the old ways to do it was to get a bunch of uh, raisins, because they have like uh, yeast and a bunch of other stuff on the surface in all those like, you know, wrinkles and stuff. You just throw it in and that's enough already. If you want to be sure, you just buy like regular baking yeast or something, throw it in. <laughs> and then you never like completely fully close it, never disinfect anything. So there goes a bunch of lactic bacteria and a bunch of other stuff. And you get this like kind of like this sour drink, uh, which is also kind of fine, right? But that's a bit different and that's not really usually stored long because of that sourness, it just becomes worse and worse very fast. And beer is supposed to minimize the amount of sour stuff because then it's um, stored longer. If there's no other stuff you don't want, like lactic bacteria and everything, then you can store it for a while with no problems. So far it was all, always good for me. I guess the first batch was uh, kind of a little bit sour in a way, but not exactly actually. It had, had kind of more like quas taste on, 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 on the distance, like some people felt it. Some people were fine with it completely, and overall it was all consumed, no problems, so, you know, then it was okay, good enough. Alright, so, the bottles were washed, but the bottles need to be disinfected right before, so we have this, like, super device here that we're gonna use. Uh, we're gonna need uh, some, some good old uh, cocainum, <coughs> obviously, to make beer better. And we don't need this anymore. All right, let's go. All right. So, um, bottles were washed, but we will need to disinfect them still. I mm, guess I make it right in there. Still need to disinfect this thing though, um, a little bit. So let's see. Let's get some water. Now we get the disinfectant in. And some more water. Now... Yeah. <clears throat> now we start. I'm gonna do one bottle, then I'm gonna wash this one through a little. Then I will need to test the primer amounts too. All right. So now while fixing this one, we're going to get... There we go. There's going to be a lot of foam there. There it is. That's a lot of foam in this one though. You right. And yeah, now you just also kind of like dips, dips the cap in there, so that one also gets disinfected. And we get it on the torture device. All right, first one in. Now that I mixed it, I'm gonna go get some inside this tube. I want a moment. On, get in. It's a bit tricky to, to get stuff into this tube though because it's very uh, very small there. Well actually that will do. That will do good, eh? Okay, 
disinfect everything in there. This you will be used. Don't really need this one. This one is nice because, yeah, this one goes all the way from the tap in the bottom of the bottle. So all the fresh, you know, beer getting in the bottle, it gets under the layer of the beer. So it prevents, you know, too much contact of beer with air. Because if you just pour it from the top, right, and just like flow goes in, then all this flow is getting aerated in the process. And it all gets potentially some of those bacteria you don't really want. And this thing helps you to prevent that. Let's get a bit more movement. Kind of got too much like disinfecting liquid in this device anyway, so might as well. Might as well get some more in here. Go. It's like really foamy. <laughs> In perfect sense, you need like the, the proper concentration and stuff. Like I'm not rationally using the disinfectant liquid here. Like if you if you do a lot, it's better to just prepare the right the right amount. And get the liquid prepared, mixed with water in right proportions, so you kind of minimax it better, and that will last you longer. We'll get to that too. <laughs> this is all still kind of. I would say tutorial going on. All right. Good. And this we don't really need for now. So yeah, now it's just basically <coughs> jerking those bottles. And that's all you pretty much do. Yeah, there's like a valve in. You press it. It just shoots all of it in the bottle, as you can see. Hits this part and it all goes on every wall so that's a really good device that i strongly recommend getting because this shit costs like 10 bucks or something and it makes the process way easier <laughs> way easier same as i recommend using the well this, this this is the star sun us production actually so probably should be like everywhere star sun hb five star uh you don't need to uh, rinse that stuff <laughs> Even though this one is very foamy there. But that's fine. Like all this stuff is pretty much or just force spray acid with some other stuff. So it's basically, you know, the stuff you drink in Coca-Cola anyway. So not that big of a deal. The bottle caps though, one moment. <laughs> mm. The bottle cap is kind of like laying on the bottom of the thing. That's not very good, huh? Let me dip it a bit more, and then I'm gonna put it this way, I guess, so it doesn't uh, contact with the not clean stuff too much. It's a little bit kind of like more of a paranoid sort of thing, but you know. It can be the reason of some issues, eh? So you rather not neglect that. Let's just water in. I already washed them all. And with the brush and everything, so... They are all very clean. Oh yeah, actually, we got... Probably dip this one in too. In the liquid. See, all this foam and everything is completely fine. Like, you wash this thing with this same stuff. <coughs> it doesn't really do a much to the beer anyway. 
the Orta Force Federation did some other stuff. They don't disclose their uh, corporate secret, the formula. So you get it all out, and then you need to let it rest like this for some time. And when it stands on the the torture device, it kind of dries up a bit and everything too. Three. All right. <clears throat> get more bottles. Oh yeah, I can get the these ones. I got this time to try to use uh, <clears throat> to drink some microplastic in. That's because you know the glass bottles are very nice, but you want to give some beer to someone, to friends or family. Then sometimes, you know, they just forget about the glass bottles after. And glass bottles are quite expensive. So this stuff kind of helps if you want to give some people away to someone. Give some beer away to some people. Yeah, without, you know, waiting anything back in exchange. <laughs> All right, this one in here. Oof. I think I should remove a little too much of it here. Like the main disinfecting stuff is what was shot inside, eh? not this type of foam. All right. Oh, yeah, that's better. That's way better. But this bottle is a bit, like, more tricky, I see, though. <laughs> like, the pattern, how the, the liquid flies in. You need to hit, like, the, the middle, otherwise it just hits in one of the... the niches there, and then it doesn't... doesn't fly all over the place. Cover all the walls, huh? It's getting more and more foamy there. Come on. Ooh, right. And these are at least lights. I can just put all of them as much as I want at the top. Glass ones are massive. I kind of like them, though, because it's already the third, third time I'm making. And they still probably will work for a while longer. You can actually use, like, the ones, the glass ones with the... With a cap like this, the flip cap or whatever, you can use uh, even from the store beer and everything that you buy. Just wash them good. <clears throat> but usually, like in the store ones, that flip cap is kind of scuffed. Because my dad used to used to buy one type of beer with those caps, and he was giving me those bottles. Uh, they're good for like kvass or something, like something that is not super carbonated. Because if you put them into something that is super carbonated, then... Those caps don't really hold that. Well, I mean, they hold when they're closed. But when you try to, like, unlock it, open the bottle, that cap can fly. Happened to me. I think even with the glass, actually, that happened before. I just tried to open it, and it just, like, flew out. Like, that metal holder thingy is basically just kind of, like, uh, not super, not super great metal. So it just kind of flew out in the champagne style. I'm trying not to use those anymore. I have like 20 glass bottles. Even more than 20, I think. Or is it 20? Maybe. <laughs> That's good enough. So now the goal is going to be to give the plastic ones out. Drink as much as possible the glass ones. And do another run of the Pipiega Brewery in January. And that we will do. Maybe some IPA, actually. No, was IPA February. 
you know, like few sets of beers still left that I need to. Uh, one's going to be expiring January, one is expiring February. So I need to already process them. And after that, maybe, maybe, I mean, most likely, it depends on the way, when I going to do the proper brewing. That'll be a bit more tricky, but we'll figure. And that store we have here actually is good. They have the the mill, so they can they can mill the malt and everything for you. And when you buy it there, they mill it for free. I don't need to get my own mill that way because there's like the small kind of cheap mill. Looks kind of like the old uh, meat grinders, to be honest. Same, <clears throat> same thingy, right? That you put like at the side of the with the gr with the grip thingy at the side of the table, and then you just mill them all that way. But it's tedious and slow, and getting like the big and good one for like the home from time to time, home making some beer feels like a bit of an overkill. Not gonna lie. All right, so now we have 10 liters there represented them. Uh, we need uh, 10 more. There's 23 in the tank. The outcome gonna be like 1920 probably. Probably like the kind of 19, we'll see. <clears throat> because there is like a bunch that is below, below the top line. That one is not going anywhere. And I mean, that's kind of not a bad thing because there is all the, the dead yeast and everything at the bottom anyway. A dead yeast, another thing is that you don't want in your bottles, so... I'll get to uh, the proper brewing with like the pot and everything. Then I'm gonna get, maybe, I'll get the cylindric, cylindric conical uh, tank. Small one. Small ones are not super expensive and don't take too much space. So I'm gonna get one probably for myself. And that one is really good because you have like this cone, this like reverse drop, reverse drop shape thingy, which at the bottom you can collect all that yeast and all that other stuff that you don't need there. All the leftovers, they just all drop through that cone down into the special compartment that you can just like close, remove, <laughs> get it out. Actually about getting out I need to check because I think all this like the beer yeast, the used one, I think people do stuff with it. I know there's first of all there's like beer yeast is like the the supplement I think, like when it dried into like this pellets and you can just, there's you can even buy in the stores I think, you can just eat it, there's like a lot of like vitamins and stuff there. Uh, sometimes they add it to uh, like food for livestock and everything, right? Sometimes uh, you can use it still kind of alive. You can use it in other brews. You can use it in baking, I think, like bread baking and stuff. So to look into that, which which other usages you can find for it. <clears throat> Maybe don't throw it away then. All right, more glass bottles. All right, that should be exactly the amount of those that I washed. But there is also like five bottles in reserve that are waiting. And no rush, we're still waiting until all the, all the stuff relaxes there. The foam drops a bit, kind of dries a little. Be with like in contact with the disinfecting liquid. The thing is, like other way would be uh, to use chlorine uh, p uh, pills, just like with the with the with the tank itself, right? You can use that to disinfect. But the thing is, you will need to like fill every bottle with the chlorine shit, and you will need to leave it like that for like thirty minutes or something, staying like this with the with the chlorine inside. Uh, and then you need to drain it, and then you need to also wash it right after, because it's chlorine. Chlorine is not this thing. Chlorine you don't want in your beer. <clears throat> and then after that, after that, you already uh, 
that you already can bottle, preferably fast also, right? Because you just kind of disinfected it. All right, let me get on another side. It's gonna be annoying. Hey, cool me. Yeah, these are like little bottles. They are not very convenient. They're really bulky for this. But they are really nice to use. <clears throat> I remove the foam. Yeah, this shit is like foaming like crazy. Literally fuming. Alright. The first circle here finished. There we go. Keep more bottles. <clears throat> yes, all these bottles gonna go in. Seems like it. Seems like it. How's it going, Kobe? How's your brewing going? Alright, get another one in there. Here. There we go. There we go. Let's get to another layer. Yeah, it was okay -ish. Not enough carbonization, I see. That's the tricky part. That's actually the thing that scares me always the most. Because you get too much. You get boom. You get not much. You get it not carbonated enough. That's the trick here. That's the problem. Ooh, damn, Axel feels blood, man. That doesn't sound good. That is not fun. Actually, let's go high up. These guys can move their plastic. Stop. So yeah, carbonization, I agree, is quite the fiesta. Do agree with you on that one. Always scared. That's why I'm gonna like do like some double check with the weights and everything of the the dextrose. <laughs> And they're probably also gonna under odd, as always, too. That's why I kind of want to switch from the concentrates to the small scale proper brewing. Carbonize with yeast and sugar, just sugar. No yeast, yeast is already in there. <coughs> Not sugar, use, uh, use cocainum. <coughs> 200 grams of uh, perfect clean cocaine. So yeah, the leftover yeast in the beer, and dextrose, maltose, fructose, whatever you have. Dextrose is the best because it's just neutral taste, like it doesn't add anything. Actually, no, lactose is a different one, I think. <laughs> I think. Lactose is not adding to the sweetness, uh, isn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Eh? 
is also I'm not doing it in the right way really. The right way would be to make syrup. To boil all this cocainum in water and then add well the right way in general I would be is uh, to uh, this thing right now this step right after a week or so <laughs> maybe well, probably a week I guess you get the tank I can't even see it here behind already there's too many bottles get the tank uh, you get uh, another tank of the same size a bit smaller just a little bit remove all like just open the well preferably you also use like something to uh get the beer with less contact with air right in the second tank in the second vessel <clears throat> hermetically closed air locked air tight disinfected and everything you move beer with cutting the bottom part right with cutting the yeast the dead yeast and everything on the bottom everything that's below the tap level stays in here you get another tank of similar proportions of the beer that is like clean i guess <clears throat> you let it like this for a week more well the longer the better kind of but you need to figure out right for some more time that's where it's going to be uh, like the secondary fermenting without all the dead yeast and stuff right it's more clean because dead yeast is not really good to stay in contact for too long because yeast is kind of like start decomposing yeast is starting autophagy it starts eating itself uh producing not very tasty things you know uh phenols and stuff and then if you remove so you remove it get the clean beer with the live yeast let it work some more and then after some time already you bottle it not even yet though you first open that thing get the syrup the sugar syrup in actually you can't even stir it so in proper in proper you need the third thing so like the secondary fermenting also will have a little bit of that yeast and stuff right you don't want that in so you get a third tank with beer right with a completely clean now already in that third tank you add the syrup with the dextrose sugar whatever you use add that syrup there boiled and everything so it also disinfected you add that in mix it all with beer and that you already bottle then you're gonna have in the bottle the beer that is like clean and that has already enough sugars for yeast to consume <clears throat> another option is a hobo version is when you just make syrup bottle the beer right from this bad boy get the syrup in the bottle in a proper amount obviously right also boiled and everything add that in the bottle close it done and there is a super hobo way that i'm gonna be doing you don't make any syrup you just drop the fucking dextrose in the bottle then get the beer in then you close it and done that one is the most risky in terms of like infecting beer with that different stuff because obviously this deck shows uh, this cocainum is from the the, the the manufacturer but it's still not crystal clean they don't do it clean right it's like one dollar 250 grams bag of kind of sugar it's not you know a laboratory clean level so it might have some stuff on it but you also found kind of nine grams of this for one liter liter bottle with some hops in and everything and the yeast already there alive right so it's going to be who gonna win like the bacteries from this or the yeast in your bottle so far in my experience thankfully yeast in the bottle wins but you might get some weak yeast or strong bacteria and they might win and then beer might get a little sour a little not perfect you know <laughs> so yeah that's the that's how it goes most of the time the bottle royale yeah uh, not all the yeast in the, so the, basically the dead yeast goes on the tank floor the yeast that is still alive i mean uh, i could um, do we do ah uh, fine don't want to waste it but fine here i'll show you it's gonna be hard to see though i think on cam <clears throat> the bottle tree exactly exactly i was actually thinking about like using the the lights from the christmas tree on this one but since there's all the liquid and stuff there it's probably not very good <clears throat> all right a little bit of beer 
I wasted again the field bot. I already tried it. All right, just a little enough. I'm gonna drink some more. All right, so I'm, I'm not sure if we can catch that in particular here. The zoom out. Oof. All right, let's try if we can see something in there. It's kind of hard to see shit, to be honest, really. Well, I mean, one moment. Can I? <clears> hmm. <throat> something, something, something. Exquisite. Hmm. That's good actually here. That sun. <clears throat> All right. So there it is. See the see the stuff there floating. You can still kind of see it. A little bit. So first of all, there's obviously bubbles because it's still got a little bit of the carbonation in because everything is airtight there. But that there, right there, the snow in, that's the yeast that is still alive. That's the thing that is called unfiltered beer, basically, because the yeast is not getting removed there. It's still in there, like on the walls, floating there. So that's the yeast that is still there. You don't really need to get any any more stuff in, to be honest. Unless yeast is really bad, of course. Because this is not really carbonated. You can see like the everything disappeared. I mean, it's also air airtight, but also CO2 is being removed through <coughs> through the airlock there, right? So re that one thing or near the PP again this one so all the pressure is gone so there is not enough co2 to to maintain the good uh, good carbonation in this one so that's bubbles and that's yeast that is still kind of gravitating there and still looking for something to eat and that's exactly when you're gonna feed it <laughs> some of that quality cocainum and it's gonna like it And it's gonna like it. Peace out, boy, low. I'm always kind of scared it's like a little... Gold like Braga. It's like the Brajenia is fermenting, basically. It's usually like in... Wild fermenting, like Kvass, for example, right? It's like this, like when alcohol starts appearing in something where you don't really expect it to appear. <laughs> it has this taste, but I mean, that's that's kind of normal now. So basically, like the aging process kind of removes that. The longer it ages, the better. Except if it got infected, then it's going to get worse only in time. If it didn't, like the, my very first one had a little bit of that. little sourness to it. And I thought it's kind of, well, well, I guess it got a bit infected. But it was all consumed. <laughs> Easily, <laughs> very fast, and no one can play. I think my mom's husband only was like, hmm, tastes like kind of braga a little bit, but he still drank everything though. Um, and then I left one or two bottles as kind of like control group basically in my fridge for months. And then at some point, we were drinking with friends, and everything was over. And I'm like, I have like, you know, the special, the special reserve. And we opened that, and that shit was good, dude. That shit was way better already. How, do you, uh, how, how much did you do the fermenting process for? Hey, clever, hello. How much time did it, did it go uh, fermenting? But I'm not sure about like it being 3% alcohol, man. I'm really not sure. That's a lie. And I can feel it even. Like nothing crazy, but it ain't 3%, dude. <laughs> Don't lie to me. Yeah, it could be just like bad yeast. That could be bad yeast. Uh, how long did it ferment and uh, how much sugar did you add for the amount of beer? For the bottle size. Uh, 
10, 14 ish days. That's normal. This this is 13 days basically right now, which is a bit too much probably. <laughs> it's not gonna die even, it's still gonna be there. Unless the yeast is like very inactive, it just can kinda like drop basically on the floor. <laughs> and fall asleep because there's nothing to eat. It only eats and sleeps and dies. Mostly. Not really. This way. There we go. All right, that means I do have lost three ones. And that should be enough. And then we're gonna measure that cocainum. Teaspoon a liter. How much is a teaspoon? In grams, I forgot. Is it five or is it ten? I don't think it's five, probably. Now this shit is supposed to be for half a liter bottle, this thing. I'm gonna measure it, control measurement, because it should be 9 grams. 9, 10 grams a liter. It also depends how dense your shit was. Eh? Uh, if it's too dense and it didn't ferment properly. So that's why I was uh, measuring the density of this thing, right? It should be 20-30% of what it was initially. That means most likely it's all eaten there. Because if it's not all eaten, then you can just overdose and it's gonna poof the bottle most likely. Because it's just gonna be too much uh, CO2, too much uh, pressure in the bottle. If you overdo. But if you also add like kind of like set, right? Like some bag of concentrate and stuff, right? That you did the same stuff as I did. Then depending what you were adding, we're adding in here sugar or we're adding in here um, like more concentrate. Because if it's more concentrate, it's going to be more dense. If it's sugar, it's going to be less dense. <laughs> uh, what do you want to learn about it, Clever? Ask, ask, and I shall answer. I will try. Dude, the guy today in the store when I when I was buying the plastic bottles <coughs> with the cocaine was fucking, I don't know. Totally not having a good day, I guess, or something. <coughs> I mean, I live here. I see people mad. And uh, people gloomy as fuck all day, every day. But that dude was especially. <coughs> and I went there right after reading like the reviews and stuff. Like, oh, such a great place. All the... <laughs> All the store personnel is so experienced giving advices. I was expecting I'm gonna go in, they're gonna start like asking what do I need and stuff, and I was just like, dude sitting quietly. And like, hello. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, plastic bottles. Uh huh. I need six and uh, Dex shows. Uh huh. And he just went there, brought me all this stuff. I'm like, thank you. Uh -huh. Amazing. <laughs> No sequel. Wait, so did you do the brew all on yourself? Like, not the, the concentrate or anything? Just... Or how did that go? How did that go? It's like the rice made concentrates. Actually, I haven't heard about those here, at least. I haven't heard about those here. I mean, they, they do get, like, if you, yeah, if you do the proper, um, like, the brewing and stuff, right, on your own, then, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna most likely already have uh, everything sorted out. Pop rice malt, okay, so you made on your own. Yeah, then, then you don't need to add any sugar, yeah. Then concentrates, you usually need to add some, either sugar or some more concentrate. Because it's kind of, like, not enough, I guess, in the concentrate itself. 
probably due to process of you know concentrating there's just not enough sugar sugary side there all right that's the last bottle i need eh? i really doubt i will need more i mean i will already clean once that i can disinfect later too if needed but that should be plenty that's 20 here 20 liters worth of bottles that should be enough nice all right there we go that should be enough all right good huh? so now we wait until all of this gets out which is already slowly doing and it kind of shit order there so now it's kind of going to be harder to figure it out but it's fine all right let's get uh let's get some double checking on the cocaine amounts did you were you adding just actual sugar though are you adding some like the dextrose like some concentrated sugar stuff so not concentrated but like just just the sweetness incarnate you get some like fancy yeast also like the the proper beer brewing yeast or you just like went with like the regular one whatever <laughs> regular sugar in bottle that might that might be kind of the case regular one is not that crazy good eh? could be it could be that could be that but yeah good luck man good luck fixing shit that's good though especially since you brewed everything on your own i'm gonna get there i'm gonna get there and for now just the concentrate plebe eh? <laughs> but we'll get there. Uh, we will get there. Do right. That's all drying. Now let's see. This bag is kind of not very... Merry yeah. early Christmas. Oh, shit, clever. Thank you, sir. I appreciate a lot. Thank you, man. Should do it a bit later. The sellout tree is coming soon. Remind me then. Remind me. <clears throat> Remind me Thursday. I'm gonna put you on the tree. I've been there on the tree for a few years there. I'm gonna get you back in there. Everyone who actually like donated in the last few days, like in December in general. I just didn't put the tree up yet. Don't want you <laughs> to be scammed. Eh? You will get your bubbles on the trees. Eh? Remind me, remind me. <clears throat> That's gonna be 10 bucks. Don't know. It goes on the tree. That's gonna be on Thursday. I'm gonna set the tree up tomorrow. Oh my day, I've just like so much stuff was going on. I didn't even find time yet. I'll get you remind me. Remind me, I'll get you up there. All right, so um, all right, the bottom bottles are kind of good enough already. But wait a bit more. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put it in some like separate.
Yeah, we're good now. Yeah, should be good. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, the battery died on one receiver. But I charged another one, so I'm prepared. Um, all right. Yeah, so we're gonna do some of that super science here. And there it is. Let's help if I did this one here. Actually, I guess it's kind of fine. It's this light, actually. What if I turn this off? <clears throat> it's a bit better. It's like so noisy on the fool. I need to figure it out at some point. I'll need to find time to sort it out. So I'll wait for it. I'll wait for the, the tree. I'll need to get you on the tree. <laughs> I'll remind me about it. I'll get you in there. And the tree will be up tomorrow, eh? You're right. Kukaidung time. The good old damn. Eh? All right, so let's see. Turned off way. Uh, we get the full, full thing of this. It says 1.7, 1.8. This, this is five. I love you guys. That's not a lot at all. All right, shit, boopsie. Uh, welcome back to the dungeon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's a lot indeed. Eh? Alrighty, see you, clever. See ya. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it a lot. Alright, so that's actually not much at all. Ah. Okay, fine. Let's get another one. Let's get a big boy. So that showed five. Dude, I was adding like two of this, I think, before. So that is uh, like seven pretty much. So that's underdosing for sure. Okay, one second. How much are you? All right, this one is 2.1. Well, <laughs> okay, 2.1. Now we get the full boy. Six point nine, boogie woogie. Um, so it's basically kind of five year, less than five. Technically, hmm. Let me see. I just kind of trying to figure the good one, the good size for it. But I have another one, but this one I guess is even smaller, right? Oh yeah, this one is even smaller. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. So I still need to do two of these, uh, unless, unless, well, actually that one will be harder to weigh in though. Doable, let me see. How much will be this? See, as I say, the glories of the express everywhere. It's all the needs. Uh. All right, I have this one too here. To Brock, when any CSRS in the chat? Thank you, Salvo. Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate a lot. That's a lot of nuts. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, so that one is even less. Ah. Okay, so there is no, there's five milliliters in this one. Well, shit, how to do this better then? I guess we get the big boy. And with him, we do double the big boy. 
double check 2.1 get this like not full a bit less because i'll need to drop the double there six so it's four yeah i guess that's fine <laughs> so that's like four in not full one is going to be four to five if i drop two more or less full that's going to be close to nine i think that's good enough It's kind of always scared to overdo so they all like pop the bottles and stuff. <clears throat> it's not something I want to experience. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I see stuff, I see. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, man. I appreciate it a lot. I appreciate it a lot. All right. So we got all of that. And now it's time to get to the bottling itself. Okay, I think I'll need you here. Uh, let's go. Because my my old boomer back probably not gonna not gonna be happy again. I remember the previous session, so I'm gonna do this boy here. <laughs> it's like when you when you fill the bottle, it's like like a little bit lower the comfortable level of just the hand right so you kind of need to go a bit lower and you kind of stay always like a little hunch there and it's just like uh <laughs> and i already kind of like uh yeah see so i see are they getting heavier there now what you feeling them with that huh? what you feeling them with that huh? all right so um uh, Connect the device. Yeah, good enough. Let's get the first stuff to remove that. And the things we don't want there. Mint, it's time to, for you to go. This way. Oof. There we go. Now we got the air in. And we gotta start. Because it's not really good with air in. Alright, done. Device is ready to use them. Good. Eh? Okay. I want to do this better. I need to drop this maybe through... Let's try to get something going there. That's gonna be probably good enough. <clears throat> Just to make it a bit better. There we go. And Just to get the sugar. Like usually I was just dropping it in, but it'll get stuck on the... On a, the nick of the bottle there. Let's see, maybe we get... Some better than you two. One moment. Uh, whoop. Let's see. The ability. I mean, we kind of will. Even though I'm not sure if it's going to be that good. Let's see. Oh, shit. This now. I uh, can. There we go.
All right. Sure how good that will be. I mean, that will kind of do, I guess. We'll see. <clears throat> Let's go here. Let's go. Um, a very dang Christmas tree, yeah. All right. And this thing there, this there. So two of these not full. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Fine. This is not like super, super convenient here, but I guess. Let's start them up. Oh, whoop. I didn't see the crotch cam there. Let's go. There it goes. Uh, It doesn't go now because it's closed still, though. Now it goes. Um... All right, that's going to be quite the process, to be honest. It takes a while. It takes a while. Actually, right now, let's go. There we go. Now it's going. Um... Oh, take some time, take some time, <clears throat> but we'll get there. I will get there. I think I'm gonna drop two, not full ones, even if it's like eight grams. I feel like it should be good enough. Seems like the yeast is kind of like not completely dead yet there, and there's enough density in, so that should be fine. All right. Let's not fill it too much. Let's see the amount. Okay, we can get more. Kind of need to dig a little bit of space there. All right. Can't really see much there, but yeah, there is uh, there is the stuff. So now, now we get cocainum. Okay, one second. Try to do it right. All right, there it goes. Uh, number one. There goes number two. And let's just try to shake it in there. Whoa, 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 damn, son. <clears throat> All right. I like sugar. <laughs> Holy shit, okay. Sure does. All right. Bit too much there. That's quite the reaction. And that's quite the reaction there. All right, let's see. And then I need to, like... Or less than or something. Then. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. Wonder in this situation what then. Hmm. That's an interesting one. How do we do here then? <laughs> so like there's the foam now. Like if I close it this way, is it fine or is it going to be way to dink? Like if I just close it this way. Like will it be too much pressure because of the foam? I mean technically it's the same amount of stuff in really. Hmm, I think I'm gonna go actually <clears throat> ask the Google Almighty on this one. Like, are we just adding it and then just closing it right with the with the foam? Or do you just wait or something? I don't know. 
Let me see. Yeah, let's see. Ah, I see. Okay, okay, okay. I see. Okay, that's smart. That's actually that's actually a good thing, but no one says <laughs> what to do in that case. All right. And he says it's fine. It says it's nice, but no one says what to do with it. Oh, wait a second. Let's. See. No, that I think is not the case there. That means that like the the CO two actually got uh, how you say absorbed eh, by uh, by the wort better, so that's a good stuff. And the advice for that is to add that stuff. Uh, before so you drop the sugar in the bottle and then you add the the beer that's gonna be better all right but what to do not sure well i mean the the foam is gonna be gone now so this bottle is gonna be the under under delivered in terms of sugar yeah, it's slowly dropping there all right but that kind of i did a bad thing for me though because now the <laughs> this thing is kind of a little bit wet inside, so the, all the, the sugar is going to be stuck on it, and that kind of ruins, you know, the measurements and everything. But fine. All right. So I guess I just kind of roll with it. All right. This bottle is going to be my experimental one. So we just do this. <clears throat> oh, and... And done. So this is gonna be the experimental one. <laughs> See how it goes with this with this boy there. I guess we do this. Before he's already going ham, it probably does. Huh? I'm not sure if there's gonna be like the poof if I open now. Probably. Okay, I'm gonna do it in the, under the sink, above the sink rather. No, no, no poof. All right, good. This is gonna be. The experiment one is going to put it in the bag in case it actually like blasts, which I kind of doubt it. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what's going to be with it. All right. This one here. Now. Next. Another bottle. All right. So now we're going to do it the smart way. And now we're going to pretend we are smart. Now we're going to do this first. And then get the liquid in after. Well, I don't think I was adding that much of it before. Kind of scared with this shit. It in. All right. Now, after the sugar is in, we already get the stuff. So this is gonna prevent the too much foam in, because we're not dropping everything at the same time way too fast, and it kind of mixes itself better because uh, liquid starts from the bottom. Which is a good thing because it contacts with the oxygen less that way. Only the top layer contacts with oxygen. <clears throat> the fresh beer arrives uh, at the bottom of the bottle. 
So it doesn't contact the oxygen. Less contact with oxygen is better for us. Uh, lower chances to get some some bacteria in. Uh, come on, you go in or not? It's hard to tell. As well as foam that way, that's good. Way less. Not sure if I should uh, keep it that much space. I think we go some more. Yeah, you know what? Enough. <clears throat> that's the that's the part that is like still always very scary for me. Is the What's the name? Like amount of uh, dextrose and stuff, and uh, uh, how much to pour. Like, will it be is this <clears throat> sorry guys not sure yeah that that's like it's weird when you when you mess with the with the cable too much right near the uh what's the name near the wireless block thingy it just goes ham there and sadly the noise filter doesn't remove it for some reason i guess it thinks i'm talking or something It zips up. Good again, yeah, it's all good. It's all good, yeah, it's just like when you, when you touch the... Like, basically... Whoop, this thing... There. If I, if I get this cable... I'm not sure, I can reproduce it, but I'm not sure if I want. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Like, it wasn't really like this before. I guess it just kind of like... Keep you good after some time, which is sad because these... These are fucking road lavalier mics. They're kind of expensive, eh? and uh, I would rather not uh, not mess with those. Eh? When you don't touch them, it's fine though. But yeah, sometimes in some situations you kind of end up touching them, and then you get some noises. And going zip zoop. Everyone went out of the lurk though. Insane. You can greet all the people now. Insane. Insane. Eh? And the microphone chan got a moment there for sure. Yeah, that's the annoying part about it. I'm not sure. When you mess around with the contact there. I have also another love mic, but you know, that was uh, in the second receiver. But that's for uh, whenever I will need, you know, they have two microphones. Eh? I'm not sure if it also won't fuck itself up the same way. You rape every 30 minutes, yeah. The engagement, man. Exactly. You know it. You know it. Yeah, sorry. I usually can, like, I know about that one. I usually, I noticed that before. I just didn't expect something gonna trigger it now, though. Like, you need some specific position for that, I guess. I noticed that before, that, like, you know, like, when I was putting it on and everything, and I saw some, like, levels, like, peaking in OBS. I'm like, what the fuck is that? So I figured it out that that's the case, but it usually doesn't happen on stream. And I guess now because I move a lot here. All right, I'm just kind of packaging this bottle separately. I don't think I'll need to really, but you never know. Just feel like I was adding like way less before. I wouldn't say it was like way too explosive before though. So maybe it's fine. And that's the problem with it. All right, fine. The bottle is uh, somewhat secured. This one gonna stay somewhere close, not not far from me, I guess, so I can witness it. 
<coughs> under control. I'm not gonna move that one to the storage room. It's like every like process of you know carbonization of bottles. I'm just kind of like scared. There is a flood of beer in my storage room. All right, another one. Yeah, let's go. Um. All right, Dextrose first. Like way less than recommended amount here. All right, not even dropping down anymore. Re, <clears throat> get in. It kind of technically should be safe, but it all depends on how how dense the the wort is, and wort is quite dense, so I'm kind of scared a bit. But should be fine. I think so. I think so. Um. All right, there we go. There we go. I need to come up with something maybe for the cable, just so it doesn't even mess with it too much. So I can't by accident get it onto something. Selling the beers for some profit. I mean, it's kind of hard here from like the, the legislation point of view, really. One of my friends uh, lost a uh, lost batch when I made them. Uh, he asked if I'm gonna make some next time. Uh, he could buy some, so we'll see. Second of January, we're gonna be gathering with boys. Uh, that will be my day off, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe he will get some. That's why I also kind of got the what's the name, the plastic ones, so I can you know give them to someone without expecting the bottle back because the glass bottles like this you kind of want to so these are for home usage plastic ones for a giving away i was gonna get it for you know basically how much how much i spent making this like pretty much one of these bottles uh cost of production sort of if not you're taking the the devices that I already like bought before, it's pretty much like how much gonna be uh, nowadays in current conversion rate, like one point five two dollars basically for a liter bottle. So not too bad, not too bad. But yeah, obviously in the store and stuff that would be illegal. In some places they have like some homebrew policies nowadays and everything. Like even here, a lot of like companies I think sell their own like brew in like the restaurant and stuff. For example, if they make it themselves in the restaurant and they sell it right there, that's kind of fine. Apparently, <laughs> uh, no problems with that. Like it's just a dish, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, you just gift it, of course. Yeah, you just gift it. Exactly. Well, the main problem will be for me to uh, to get it there. That's the main problem. Because actually European Union and some separate countries inside European Union have very strict laws about importing alcohol in, depending on how strong alcohol is. Like strong alcohol is quite limited, for example. Beer, less limited, but kind of depends on the country and stuff. Like, for example, when I went for, to TwitchCon in Berlin, <clears throat> I only later realized that I was breaking the law because I got, I think, one bottle too much, basically. I don't remember exactly. Or like half a liter too much. Something like that, basically. Or was it Sweden, actually? For DreamHack? No, I think in Sweden I only got like... Oh, no, 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 I think so. Or... Don't know. No, I think I got like one or two bottles, probably, to Sweden. And to Berlin I got two for Ella, different ones, and uh, Goaku got one, and I don't remember actually. So it was like, f I think it was four bottles really, I remember. And that was a bit too much, I think. Not to mention that it's also kind of bulky. 
bulky and heavy. The glass bottles are like this, like one liter. Glass bottle like this, this is also really chunky glass, which is good, which is why I like these bottles. Uh, it is uh, it is heavy. It is heavy and it takes a bunch of space. So yeah, taking it with you on the plane would be quite tricky. Getting like a couple of bottles just like, you know, to pour so people can try. That's doable, I guess. For that, I would be able to travel also, yeah, no. <laughs> be able to afford traveling and stuff also. There is a lot of a lot of things you need to be able to, which nowadays here become kind of complicated. A little complicated there. But we'll see. We'll see how things will go. Eh? Ooh, right. There you go. That's a good amount, I think. <laughs> That's how, in general, the legality of the alcohol sales and stuff being circumvented here. Not allowed to sell booze, like, after how much nowadays, I don't remember. Is it, like, separated by how dense it, um, how, how strong the alcohol is? I don't remember, but yeah, there is some. Until, like, 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., you're not allowed to buy, to buy, sell booze. No, you just buy or sell, um, uh, the lighter. And, well, no, like lighter usually with cigarettes. There is like a recommended price of the cigarettes here, right? The minimal, or like maximum actually recommended and minimal, I guess, too. Basically, not recommended, but quite strict, let's put it that way. <laughs> hey, Theodore. So you are, you are supposed to sell cigarettes, for example, for that amount of money. How it goes in the restaurants. Restaurants like to have a high margin and everything, right? Whatever they sell. So they're not going to sell you cigarettes for that price where's the profit then they sell you a lighter a very overpriced lighter and then you get cigarettes as a gift with the lighter that's how it usually goes and same kind of goes with the booze like after midnight and stuff <laughs> they just sell you like i don't know you just buy pizza or something and they bring you a bunch of booze with that pizza but technically you order a pizza rest is a gift it was just very expensive pizza There we go. I see over there. I see nice. It's because of the tax residency stuff, I guess. Kind of sounds like it. So half a year you stay in another country, you become tax resident of another country, and then they're going to have issues probably uh, working with you and paying you stuff. Because when you become non-tax resident, then, and you work in the country where you are not tax resident, then the taxation system becomes more strict and annoying. And that's, I think, what they want to strengthen here now, because a lot of people escape the country, but they still keep working in the, in the companies here. So they kind of want to push people to go back home or to stay in another country uh, with no means to earn money because, you know, fuck everyone, I guess. There we go. All right, get some more bottles. Eh? Let's get this one, I guess. Let's see what I say. Eh? Well, I mean, better than nothing. Better than nothing, after all, eh?
All right, so we'll see how this will go. And then maybe next time I'm going to be trying to add some more deck shows. Uh. And as always, scared that it's just going to all, like, you know, pop. And rip the bottles. Uh. Beer everywhere. So I'm always kind of underdosing on it. So far, it was kind of all right. And that's probably the highest dose I ever added. Uh. And that's it's still kind of under the normal dose, really. Let's see, as I say, uh, it might be a bit more complicated to find something with good pay there. But I think IT nowadays can get you good pay everywhere, so doable. Doable. Have you thought about doing a reverse maneuver? Taking like her with you? And she's finding something? Or is it going to be more complicated? Because so far I only heard about people leaving. Two other countries from Spain to work, to be honest. Out of like Ellis community, my community and stuff. Whenever someone goes, they don't go in, they go they go out. But IT nowadays like people running from here to places where uh like people run to Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. Like Tajikistan is a is a beautiful country, uh GDP of which for I don't I, I don't remember exact number, but I think it's like around thirty percent of country's GDP is uh, basically money transfers back home from immigrants who work here. And right now, people just go from here to there to live and work in IT, and everyone's fucking happy. Well, in capitals mostly, because you go outside of the capital, and there might be you know. A little bit no internet, a little bit no electricity sometimes, especially in winter. Because there's kind of priority goes on providing uh, heating rather than providing your fucking computers with video games, bro. Eh? Rakia, nice, nice. Twin leader DJ nice, let's see, nice the other. I have, I have some moonshine actually. My mom's husband making moonshine. Kind of like professionally, you could say, for a while already. Professionally, as in like his gear is really good. Like my shit here right now is like, you know, trash. Like he has like the the special, like the device to like to, to, for deep cleaning of the product and everything. Not just, you know, the cube, the retortion cube or whatever. But like the actual device that removes uh, different fractions and everything of different density. So like, okay, no, 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 right order, please. So he's going ham. I have some of that moonshine. But thing is, I don't really drink strong alcohol. So that moonshine is actually standing in my, uh, like, one started bottle in the fridge for, like, a year pretty much already, I think. And another one just like waiting completely closed also for a while already because I don't really drink it and uh, none of my friends nowadays pretty much drink it. It was like a period of like full complete economy when no one knew what's going to be happening and there was no donuts and stuff. That's when I kind of switched to strong alcohol for a while whenever we were gathering with people just because it's cheaper. And everyone also kind of was fucked anyway, so we just kind of like went with a little bit more budget mode with gathering and drinking. But now that things are kind of more or less fine and beer actually didn't get that much expensive, it's kind of still fine. <clears throat> like the tap beer still might be pretty affordable. Not to mention like the Who Garden actually in the budget store near me is like like less than one box for half a liter bottle and that's really good let's see what they say all right i mean sounds good but nowadays i'm i'm open to like get going almost everywhere and just give me give me the internet give me livable conditions and i'm down Just let me let me out of here, please. Police. 
Then Stolpo. I mean, why not? Seems good. Seems good to me. That's the thing. You just live the life. That's good. Living the life, man. Why not? That sounds good to me. Are you already living the life? Now let's get the plastic one. See how these go. And this one gonna be the giveaway bottle. A one-off. A one-off. All the weep jury there. I see how it is. Eh? Insane. Eh? Now this might be annoying actually with feeling it. Ah, uh, not too bad. I can see it better too. Nice. Yeah, so this is the, the magical device here, see? The vault stuff. So you just press it, and it pours. Huh? Stop pressing it, and it doesn't. Very convenient. A very convenient little valve there. Praise Gibbon. Oh, very vanilla of you, damn son. <clears throat> yeah, we even scared to, to even scared to ask what sock watch is. That's probably some way to dink shit. Dark beer. Uh I don't mind. It's kind of like hit or miss for me, really. I like it, but sometimes it's not exactly up to my taste. Not even like the bitterness part. Okay, the problem with the plastic ball is you can see like the angle here. Uh, how much is that? Because it's hard to get more into this. Uh, I mean, I think it's good, right? Oh yeah, the, the caps actually. Oh, let me see how that works. I mean, just like... Get them in, and that's all good. Is there some five head, five head way to do it? Since they are with the, with the ring here, I guess you just kind of. Oh yeah, okay, I see. Nothing super fancy with them. All right, just get it. Oh lol, and we get it. I guess. Hope. I hope. <laughs> some dark beers are nice. Um. But the bitterness for me is fine. I like IPAs and stuff, for example, right? Like the bitter beer is uh, whatever for me. I don't mind. Eh? But some of the dark ones might be like a bit uh, not bitter, but like I don't know how to even like explain. Like some of some of it might be like a bit too sweet. Uh, some of it might be like with some like taste nuances that I don't really like. One second, if you go. Like, for example, Hobgoblin, that one you probably should know. If you drink beer, that stuff is like, I think, kind of everywhere. Uh, the Witchcraft Brewery, they have a lot of like these, like, fantasy. Fantasy named the beers. Uh, a lot of them are dark. Like Hobgoblin is uh, quite like bitter and everything, but I don't really mind. Like that one, I kind of don't mind. Uh, but I don't really go for it too much. Like nowadays, if I want bitter stuff, I just get IPA. I have a friend who uh, Guinness. Like Guinness, Guinness. If it's the like, Guinness, also the problem with Guinness. I like Guinness actually. 
but it's really bad in like bottles and cans, at least here, I don't know why. Like really bad. Like first time I drank Guinness, that was uh, when me, my dad and my grandfather, uh, we went to the pub. I guess I don't remember, I was like 16, I guess, or something. I went to the pub, you know, to, to sit. Like my, my grandfather especially loved it. I mean, it was good. It's kind of like, you know, the whole three, the three generations of our family uh, just sitting, drinking beer together. That was nice. So we went to the pub and uh, we're just trying different, like, you know, nice beers and stuff. Obviously, by that time, by the time I was 16, I was already quitting drinking, basically. So I already had, like, a decent experience, but I obviously never drank, like, the pub beer, you know, the quality and the keg stuff. It was always, like, some, some fucking <clears throat> trash mop water, basically, from the store, sometimes in plastic bottles and everything. So they got some Guinness. And so my dad was like, well, let's check if it's the right Guinness. So you're supposed to, like, drop the penny coin on top of the, the hat, the foam. And it should stay. It should float, basically, on the foam. Well, we didn't have the penny coin, right? And we're not sure how, how they relate to our local coins. But another, another stuff is that... Um, uh, the foam, the hat again, right? It should stay the same all the way till you finish the bottle. So you're drinking the all, all the all the mug, all the pint, and all the foam stays at the bottom pretty much like the same way it was in the beginning. And that actually was the thing. So it was a real Guinness. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> that was really good. Then at some point we got it in the pub already with my friends together. And one of my friends really liked it. I mean, I also kind of already was into it, right? But my friend also really liked it. And at some point in college, we were going to the New Year's party. And we decided already to kind of, you know, start warming up on the way. Because we were walking there. There was like so many people going that we didn't fit in the cars that were present. So me and some other friends decided to just go for a walk there. <clears throat> we almost got late for the fucking New Year, actually, too. Like, went, like, <laughs> came in, like, five minutes before already, you know, that's time. Um, so we decided to get some, that was the olden times, the gooder times, you know, when you could just, like, at, uh, at uh, like, I don't know, like, 20, 23.00, like, 11 p.m., uh, 31st of December, you could just buy some beer in this store, you know. Now you can do it even on a regular day, because of limitations in time of alcohol sales. <clears throat> but yeah, we basically just got some, some of the Guinness in uh, cans and just went, you know, drinking them on the go to the party, on the road to the party. And that was trash. Like, holy shit, dude. Like, my friend who liked Guinness in the pub, he was like, dude, I can't finish it. Can you, can you finish it? And I'm like, no, dude, I like barely finished mine. It's, it's really bad. <clears throat> so since then, we only drink Guinness basically when we... When we in the pub or something. If, if I'm in the pub and there is Guinness, I'm gonna drink Guinness. That's like 100%, at least one. I see Glorious, I see. Could be, could be. Well, if it's in kegs and stuff, that, that kind of has less effect, I guess. If it's in, in, in cans and bottles, that was garbage. Because I had experience later, because my mom likes uh, dark beer, like, she doesn't really drink beer much, right? But she likes sometimes, like, some dark beer, basically, and she also, like, tried the Guinness, she bought the Guinness, I remember, and it was just, like, oof. It was bad. Like, all, all like, the hat is, like, non-existent, almost. They started using, like, those, like, five head cans now, with this, like, um, the bowl with the nitro something thingy. That one kind of preserves the hat, at least. Preserves, like, the proper carbonation, the proper amount of uh, CO2 diluted in the water, I guess. I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> so, no, water, like, liquid, right? The beer. So, it kind of, like, usually is better if you get it in the cans like that, with the bowl. You can usually hear. You just get the can and you can hear, like, there's, like, floating, floating plastic bowl. <laughs> 
There's actually kind of nice one, also dark one, Valentine's. You probably know Valentine's from whiskey or like, I'm not sure, like scotch something. Uh, yeah, Valentine's. And they also had beer named that way here, dark beer actually. It also, it was actually kind of not expensive really, not that expensive. And the cans had this like, this bowl for preserving the hat and stuff. And that one was pretty decent. It was kind of mild, it wasn't anything crazy, but it was good. The thing is, like, with, with beer, um, like, all the experimentation, all the, like, craft stuff and everything is good. It's nice. I really do like it and support it. But, you know, sometimes you just want to drink beer. You don't want to be, like, you know, fucking Dragon Calm Ale or something. You just want to drink some honest, pure, clear beer without any, any fancy shit to it. And the more often you drink it, the less you want Dragon Khan, basically. That's how it goes. Eh? Oh, they add some, some syrup and everything? I see. But the sugar syrup, alright. Copyrighted Dragon Khan beer? Yeah. I mean, there's probably some craft brewery that already does that. I wouldn't be surprised, even. <laughs> Like, if you look at, like, uh, craft uh, brewing uh, market, like, here even, right? Like, we're totally not at the at the tip of the, you know, of the of the iceberg here. <laughs> we're not, uh, not at the forefront of the craft brewing, even though it became pretty big last year, as I would say. But it's uh, the assortment amount of stuff you can get here. Like, you go to... Uh, the store where we usually get like the the draught beer uh, from the tap, they usually have at least uh, fifty, I think, or something. Maybe more. No, I, 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 I think fifty for sure. Like taps of different beer. Not all of it is like you know some fancy craft stuff. Craft stuff is usually like ten or something. The rest is kind of more of uh, more you know kind of usual styles and stuff like some vice beer. Uh, some, uh, like, you know, regular pilsners, laggers and stuff. That's the thing that people mostly buy, and that's the cheapest stuff usually, too. <clears throat> well, cheaper stuff, not the cheapest. But it's also, like, you know, the 50 taps and stuff, but, like, a whole store is just a bunch of shelves of all the types of craft. And, like, the designs of those cans and everything, they are, like, super good. Like, there's so much, like, really... Like, really cool, colorful and everything stuff. It's insane. So there is, like, everything for any taste. With any name, with any with any design, there is, like, plenty of shit there already. Like, compared to regular store beer, those designs are insane. They usually also, I think, just kind of, like, like, print on sort of, like, special paper or something most of the time, I think. Uh, so they just kind of, like sort of like stick it to the can instead of like printing right on the can, right? So they kind of have like more more coverage on the can of the print. So they have like a whole bunch whole bunch of art on it pretty much. Like all, all the can is like covered with some art. All right, let me open the tank a bit. Well, fine, let's finish this one. I open with two, with two arms. Whichever looks the coolest, I see. Well, the craft ones, the craft ones, yeah, they they usually are really creative. If you if you want just like you know honest beer, then it's actually like the more the more boring, the better. Now the German beers, for example, they are really boring, but mostly in terms of uh, looks, right? But it's mostly because you know that that beer is like being fucking made for like few centuries already, and you know that it's gonna be good stuff. Like some Franciscaner or some shit, that's good shit, man. I love that. Like we had Franciscaner Dunkel. Uh, like it was called like semi-dark or something. That was good shit. That was like one of the first times we went to the restaurant with friends. Uh, again, with the better times. When a bunch of students with pocket money could just go to, you know, to the uh, sort of... Like I wouldn't call it a restaurant, kind of like uh, glorified pub, eh? Temple Bar, it was called, I remember. And uh, just got ourselves some, you know, steak, some beer. 
And that was like one of the first ones we were getting there. That was good. Like the people affected by the boring. Well, I think it, it, it's, it's from the olden times, you know. Like they didn't have some crazy designs back then. So they just... Uh, they just made some... Uh, some stuff. And... Uh, some design yeah. from like, I don't know, 19th century or some shit. <laughs> it all wasn't, wasn't very colorful. It wasn't anything crazy. But the product is good. That's the main thing. Camera. Focus. The crowd beer can get very unboring, that's for sure. I don't mind some types. And the tomato beer actually is kind of alrighty once in a while. Like whenever I see it in the craft uh, place in the top, in the, on the top, then I usually kind of get myself like a half a liter, like one, one pint of tomato beer. The tomato goes in. It's nice. I like it. Well, it depends what you get, though. Sometimes it might be, like, a good batch. Sometimes it might be not very good batch. And there are spicy versions also. It's alrighty. IPAs, I like. Double IPAs already sometimes can be different. Like, double IPAs, like, I remember I tried some. It was really good. It was, like, a really strong double IPA, but I didn't even feel the strength. It was, like, nice. Like it was bitter, it, you, like the, you, you didn't feel the alcohol really. And once we got also like double IPA with like black currant or something, bruh, that was like first time my friends saw me like pouring the beer out. Like I didn't finish the glass. Well, everyone else just kind of dished it instantly. And I tried, but I couldn't. I mean, I could, but I was like, all right, I mean, I, I can't just like force it into myself, but I'd rather just drink something better than this. <laughs> That was the first time I actually poured it because it was like it first of all, like the alcohol was uh, feeling there really hard. It was like eight or nine percent, I think. So you could feel the alcohol, like the eight and nine percent might be still, you know, not feeling like super alcohol heavy. Like if, it, if it's really good, you don't even feel anyway. Like it's still tasty and everything, like taste kind of covers that. Like you feel a little bit like you know, this like heat when you drink it, but. It doesn't like taste like drinking like pure alcohol. <clears throat> but that one kind of tasted like alcohol, and this like black currant taste was just kind of making it feel like you drink not the beer, but some sort of like some little wine or some shit. And that was like, oof, not that good. Not a huge fan. I want to try the tomato one. It should be if you can find some like craft breweries and stuff there should be some tomato tomato goze it will usually call the style it's pretty nice like i saw i think quote me was complaining about the tomato beers and everything so i guess like norway should have some like quote me was or was quote me from no, no no i don't remember actually where i'm mixing him up with the uh, uh with another alcoholic another local alcoholic <laughs> that one is from norway so, not sure exactly, but yeah, basically I think it should be everywhere already, more or less, more or less. Now that you also got like a whole bunch of, you know, those uh, fedora tipping uh, uh, rich Russian IT dudes moving to Serbia, they should bring some of the habits with them, so you're gonna probably have some. More, more of the Karavd beer, more of like some, uh, you know, like the Dragon Calm Latte and stuff like this to prepare, prepare. My friend in Uzbekistan now already like sees a bunch of that, like the Karavd beer and stuff. <clears throat> like basically they like create the atmosphere, so all the relocated people don't feel alienated too much there. They feel themselves home, eh? Let's see, so I see. Yeah, that's pretty much how it is. Eh? The craft menus everywhere. They have one like pub eh? that is uh, 
kind of cool. Last time we went there actually was right before Corona happened. Like literally like 14th of February and then like 20 something of February, poof, lockdown time. Um, that one is actually a brewery with the pub. So it's family business, like dead, dead brews beer. Well, like serious brews, you know, like has like huge fucking things and stuff. Uh, like wife, maybe like daughters, I don't know, like cooking and uh, kids, uh, like two uh, two two dudes uh, uh, working as as waiters there, basically. Kind of nice place, really nice beer, but the kitchen is uh, not that good, sadly. Basically, like overpriced stuff you make at home. Like literally, like the the saucy the sausage they had there is pretty much what I cook at home from the store. So that wasn't totally wasn't totally worth the price, the asking price. But the beer is good though, and what I like they had uh, uh, like the the taste plate basically. So they bring you like this like s segmented uh, like plate thingy with the five I think or or something uh, like. 200 grams glasses, I think. So you can just kind of like, you know, try all they have there. <laughs> and then you can order some more. That was good. Well, I mean, you pay for that too, obviously, right? Because it's still, you know, like five, five uh, 200 grams glasses is still, you know, a liter of beer. So you kind of pay for that. But it's nice because you can get like, you know, to try everything they have there. And then already go with what you like and order some more. Ooh, right. It's actually kind of like, well, I'll, I'll show on the, the different cam with the light. I think the Ember Ale actually is going very good in terms of color and everything. The Rage Juice, uh, wasn't it glorious? Uh, wasn't it? Ooh, right. Let's get more bottles. The glass one, plastic ones are all full. All right, that's actually already soon gonna be, I think, kind of maybe four more, probably. <clears throat> probably. It could be quite the ragey juice, though, because it is indeed somewhat amber, I'll show. And the light and plastic bottles is really good to see, actually. I guess kind of like the, the dark bottle, you know, cheats it a little bit, but it looks pretty good, color-wise. I see so all right. That's the problem with places to go, yeah. Like with this <clears throat> Uzbekistani place we are going is insane, dude. I'm a, I'm afraid they're gonna start like increasing the prices or something soon because there's so many people going there. They quite often just like playing fool. And uh, like it's like it used to be just like the taxi drivers, like Uzbekistan people. Of course at Dilo. Well, so far they so okay. It's it's hard to predict yet, but you know. It's not, it's not, it's not dead. That's good. That is good. Design, design for the cover. Uh, I don't have a printer, man. I don't have a printer. That's the problem. Yeah, that was back places are ridiculous. Like you get like $3 kebab. And uh, like, usually we go there, we just get food. And one of my friends get like, like a cup of tea for himself. And all the like Uzbekistani people go there, they get like kettle of tea, basically. And we were like, well, you know, maybe we should also like ask how much is like the kettle and stuff. <laughs> and just get a kettle and just, you know, drink all, all of us. And it's less than one box. It's like 80 cents. You get like the proper leaf tea, like the full kettle of that tea. And like... Well, amount of glasses, uh, amount of cups, like, you know, the proper, the Uzbe Uzbekistani glasses, uh, uh, cups. It's not the cup, not the glass, I'm not sure how to call it, it's called uh, Piale, it's called. Uh, so you just, like, sit there and drink all that tea in crazy amount, and uh, the food is cheap, and it's all good, eh? That so far is, like, the, the highlight of the last month, which is, like, two times a week on my day off, so we go there. And always just like impressed by how cheap it is and how good it is. But yeah, no booze, nothing there. 
obviously. And yeah, that, that, that visit to the pub before Karuda was like the last time we went to any pubs with friends. Because it's like, it's expensive. And then, you know, from, from the Corona times were, were over, you know, all the shit fest started. So money became kind of tight to go spend it on the pubs and everything. And yeah, you now can just get a bunch of like draft beer <coughs> straight from the tap for a reasonable amount of money. So why not? And we just rather do that and just cook some food ourselves and sit at my place or something. That's pretty much our go-to. And whenever we do that. Or if it's summer, we just go to summer house. Even better. Friend got like some big barbecue stuff there going. Smoker. We just need like sauna there. And we good, man. Don't need anything in life. You know, maybe like a little pool at the deep after sauna. Okay. Then you done. <clears throat> then you done. You finished. You achieved everything. You peaked. And at the same time, like before that place, there was... Um, uh, well, it was kind of like... And we decided to go like once a month or something. We decided to gather to some pub. That lasted like two months. Because <laughs> then Corona arrived. Uh, try different pubs around here basically. And before the last time we went to. Uh, like also like local bar and everything. And the thing is like it was. Uh, like kebab we get here with friends now is like three bucks. And you get like chonker. And you just like eat that like. Well, most of my friends basically kind of done after that already. Like, I can eat something else after, but yeah, you're going to be full. Very full. Um, and we went to that, like, bar with friends. Eh? I got some beer. Beer wasn't, like, super expensive. That was good. That was all right. But food, eh, dude. Eh? Like, I got schnitzel, and that was, eh, like, 10 bucks schnitzel. That was, that at least didn't feel that bad. Eh? Because that was eh, a big one. That was a big one with some potato and everything. That was that was okay. That was like a huge, like the, the plate, the, the pan size schnitzel, basically. Obviously, it's thin, right? But still. And then my friend also paid 10 bucks and he got kebab. Eh? He was expecting that's gonna be some like giga kebab now. And they brought like some, some fucking, I don't know. Carnichon probably doesn't make like sense in many in many languages, but yeah, it's kind of like you know, if the kebab you get uh, in uh, the place we go now is like a proper cucumber, that was a fucking carnichon. That's like <clears throat> the manlet of kebabs basically for ten bucks, like for a couple of bites, and he was mad. So after after that, yeah, we kind of like somewhat not really into going. There was one place we wanted to visit. We had like the, the fixed price pub here. Um, it's called Pivaldi, which is like, you know, combination of Vivaldi and Piva, which is beer. It's like a brewery pub where everything is one price. So like it was, uh, I'm not sure if they changed uh, some pricing, but it was like pint of beer, three bucks, steak, three bucks. You know, like, I don't know, like, burger, three bucks, everything three bucks, pretty much. And we kind of wanted to go there, like, before the corona stuff, but they already all were booked. Like, they always booked, like, crazy. They're always full. So we never got to that place. <laughs> Maybe at some point, because at least the pricing policy seems pretty good. Nice kebab is, like, 3.3 .3 bucks. Well, yeah, that you, you can find that here, too. Yeah. In Moscow, it's going to be... In Moscow, standard kebab price right now is three, I think. Like, if you go to the train station in the center of Moscow, it's going to be the most, the most will be a three, 3.3, 3, something like that. Yeah, 3.5. Not the 3.3, 3, more closer to three, basically. That's going to be standard price for kebab here. Uh, you go, uh, but we go to the place where you also pay standard price. 
but there on the train station it's going to be smaller probably like 10 20 percent smaller uh the one we get is out of beef the one on the train station is chicken uh one we get they add some cheese a little bit there and uh, they add uh, fresh and marinated cucumbers which like fresh cucumbers and kebab roll well it's shawarma right shawarma basically shawarma kebab roll uh that's that's what you call kebab here most of the time uh like fresh cucumbers and those i dislike a lot they just like kind of like take uh drag drag the um, uh, drag the blanket on themselves in terms of taste all the time marinated ones are good they kind of like combine marinated and fresh and it's pretty good and it's huge it's really big and that's for three bucks here you go to the center and yeah you get well it's the center the very center is going to be more we have like train station kebabs you know in like those like random joints and we now have um uh how it's called gastronomical center here which is basically like glorified huge uh food court but fancy one so there's like for example like some place for like wine and stuff they have like some seafood some oysters there you know this kind of uh, mall uh this kind, this kind of food court so it's like it's not your like mcdonald's or burger king or something like more fancy shit <laughs> bro kebab there is uh how much was it when I, I i got it to try i needed to try that you know i kind of was okay i want to try like what i'm paying for that much it was seven bucks i think seven bucks kebab dude here and it was nothing special whatsoever well i mean yeah sure it was like beef also true was kind of like good true but it wasn't like super huge it wasn't something outstanding like what what for man <laughs> what did they pay so much for after that that was last time that is also the place where they were selling eclairs for like five bucks like one fucking eclair for five bucks i'm like dude <clears throat> what is this man what do you put in those at least everyone was like uh you know just like taking photos with that stuff you probably don't even actually eat it and buy it you just kind of like can i you know like take a photo with him for instagram and then i put it back because i mean yeah sure they all like glossy beautiful but bro for this amount of money for fucking eclair no i'm gonna get like a whole box of them for that money here but that's like the 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 fancy food court there's like people build differently going there that's my, my favorite one because of the contrast you know there's like this like fancy food court and it's near the train station so you have like the train station market near the train station you have like all the hobos you know asking for spare change actually they don't ask for spare change anymore like last time dude was like yo bro i'm like from from war right now uh i actually don't drink don't mind that i smell like booze it's it's just medicine i, I don't drink man i don't drink like you know i like my friend died right now in war i just came back here to you know to bury him and everything like man can did you have some like you know can you help an old man a warrior and stuff and I'm like, well, I mean, I had some like coins basically, and you know, like usual stuff. They have some coins. I have some coins. I don't really like need them that much. And, like coins here nowadays, they don't, they don't do shit really. Can buy bread with those sometimes already. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, sure. Here's some coins. And he's like, oh no, 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 bro, you, 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 you keep that to yourself. Like, no, how it was. I give him coins. He's like, oh, like that. And I'm like, I mean, dude, I, I only have a card. Oh, I can I can accept cards. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Fuck off. You take this or go fuck yourself. <clears throat> Insane, man. They already advanced there. They already advanced. But yeah, that's like the contrast. You have this like fancy food court, and there's like all the hobos outside walking and like, you know the regular audience of your average train station with like, you know, like some people pissing nearby and stuff like this. And right at the uh, like right at the entrance, like ten steps away from the entrance, that is just your average three dollars kebab stand. That one has a line to it, and you go to the mall and all those like seven dollars kebabs, no one's fucking buying that shit. And you go to the regular mall nearby with the regular food court with McDonald's and Burger King and stuff, and that one is packed. Like it literally, like you can't sit there anywhere. It's packed completely. Homeless taking cars, yep. Yeah. 
the advanced dude huh? the advanced telling you man the future is indeed here all right i think we're coming to the end pressure is lower i'm not sure that like, would be perfect if this is gonna fill this bottle and we're done that would be amazing because uh, i don't want to how, how far is another bottle after this one come here for mcdonald's you'll be broke in two days i mean kind of like basically like i'm posting on telegram actually there's telegram command i think also or is in my socials command and on my Instagram, I post the foodies there. You can check the photos, what you get and for how much you get in that Uzbekistan place. But basically, you get like a whole plate of uh, like pilaf or like soup with lamb with like a whole fucking potato basically there uh, for less than you pay for like Big Tasty, basically. So like, bro, why? Where would that go? I mean, I guess sometimes you kind of have a craving for some of that garbage, right? You just want to have some fries or you just want to have some like milkshake. But mostly mo mostly milkshake and fries get like some cravings for me sometimes. I just I just like that shit once in a while. <clears throat> but other than that, like actually going and eating like McDonald's or something, dude. <clears throat> like at, at least like KFC or something here is like more fair. And you can get like some spicy wings or something with beer. That's good for your beer. But McDonald's, yeah, it's just like, nah. <laughs> now that we found this place, I just feel bad even going there for fries. To be honest, I went, I went once. I got like, I have their up, so I just like got like a bunch of like discounts on. Like you have, you can have up to four like discount codes. I got all four. And I still paid for all I got, like two times more than I paid earlier the same day in this Uzbekistani place. And I was like full from that. Now, why only now sock? Was it good before? And they ruined something there. Yeah, I'm really under underdosing on the sugar because it's 18 bottles. So it's supposed to be 180 grams. But this one is 250 grams. So this bag should be already like close to empty and it's halfway in. So I'm underdosing on sugar, but I feel like I kind of don't want more. Let's see, so okay, see, uh, McDonald's here was like really solid always. Uh. I mean, it's still kind of easy, even like becoming not McDonald's anymore. It's still quite solid there. Uh. Yeah, the quality is stable. Like, you go there, well, I mean, there were some like when they just switch, right? There were some issues people are posting on social media, like some like, some like a rotten patty or like moldy patty or something, right? But like, I never had that, and like, it, it, it's always the solid quality. Especially since it was, it used to be like international company here represented, right? Now it's like the, the scuffed alternative. And they were like, you know, walking on tiptoes pretty much here to not, to not piss someone off because they could get in trouble and their business is huge here. Was huge, I guess. <clears throat> so the quality was always solid, like very solid. You get something, you will get the same result in any, in any place. Hesburger, uh, Hesburger we had, it used to be, but it kind of didn't go. They closed that, I think almost all of them. I think some, uh, some like gas stations, I think had some integrated Hesburger still left, but mostly they closed here, I think. It's like the Finnish chain. I've been there once. I think it was okay, but the only one I was sad, it was in 2014 when our government did the first, the first step to UTPPG, uh, when, uh, I suddenly reading news and I, I'm reading that Wendy's, Wendy's is leaving Russia and I'm like, you know, <laughs> Wendy's nuts actually entered Russia. I didn't even fucking know. All right. I need to try it. So that became my mission before they completely left the country to go to the place where Wendy's was still working to try stuff. So like a few days in a row, I was going to that one place. It wasn't too far though, like, like bus ride, basically direct bus run. Uh, and just trying stuff there, and it was actually really good. Like, that shit was good here. Like, the chili soup, the one that Asman also, I think, always, always, you can see whenever he gets them Wendy's, 
that shit is nice, man. That shit was good. And like, you know, like even getting some soup and fast food is already kind of rare. <clears throat> but that was nice. And the burgers were nice there. There was one with mushrooms I really liked, I remember. A fries. Uh, fries I don't remember, actually. Were fries good? But they had those like weird uh, tw tw twisty fry uh, there. But that one they never had whenever I went there already. McDonald's truly gone or are they running behind the scenes? I think, I, I'm not sure. Maybe they have agreement with that dude that runs the business for them. Could be, could be. Because dude was their franchisee. Like he was running, like McDonald's was running all the restaurants themselves here. Uh, but train stations, airports and stuff for some reason, I guess because of the law, maybe because it's kind of like governmental facility, right? So if you have a restaurant in a governmental facility, it shouldn't uh, belong to an international company or something, only to local business, I guess. Something like that. My assumption, I'm not sure. So all the train stations and uh, airports and stuff, restaurants belong to uh, like franchisee. So like people who, it's McDonald's, but it's owned not by McDonald's basically, but by people who pay McDonald's to own that stuff. <laughs> and one of those dudes basically bought all their business when they left. So I'm not sure. Maybe there is some, like, deal behind the scenes also going. I uh, wouldn't be surprised, though, because I think a lot of business goes like this nowadays here. Because you see a lot of companies, whole manufacturers being sold for nothing. Or, like, pennies, eh? which, I mean, kind of understandable, right? Because everyone is just kind of piecing out. Like, they're not going to be able to work, but still, it's way too cheap, I feel, sometimes. Or it's something like World of Tanks developers, right? Who are like, oh, you know, we're just going to give uh, our company away for free to uh, to some other company and we're not going to get any profits from them whole from the whole region anymore when this region is like the main money maker for world of things because it never hit as big in other countries so yeah come on dude <laughs> hey pat hello hell yeah hell yeah indeed eh? That's the one. Ooh, right. Well, that should be the last one. And I don't think I will even be able to fill this one fully. Yeah, I think it's kind of already too... I can tilt it a little, though. We just need to be careful so we don't get the dead yeast up. Don't wake up the dead there. Uh... So, yeah, we'll see how it will all... And with the with this stuff, <laughs> like you see and stuff, also I think kind of plan planning to to sort of leave. That's gonna be funny though because uh, back in like early two thousands we had like the rip off KFC chain called Rostics, and then the actual KFC kind of like came to the market. Like, all right, guys, you know this is kind of our jam here, and uh, how about we buy you? And make you know actual KFC. So they basically just bought the they bought the imposter. All right, switch. Poof. <laughs> they bought the imposter and entered the market that way. Yeah, that's kind of scary. And now they're gonna be leaving. And the impo in the imposter returns, like they're gonna call it rustics again, from what I know. Come on, like that, that low. All right, yeast is still at the bottom. At least that's good. Eh? Come on, dude, you're joking. How much? It's still like three liters or so, so it's kind of that, not that simple to manipulate all this. I don't want to like shake it too much. Mm -hmm. Playing the long con, yeah, basically, basically. Dude, 
dude. For real? Oh, I'm an idiot. There we go. <laughs> I was kind of blocking it there. All right, that's good. Let's fill this one, and we good. Yeah, see it kind of clean there, still so good. No, no dead yeast from the bottom of the sea. The only thing about Rostix that was actually, it was literally like KFC ripoff. One to one. All the menu. Zingers, all that stuff. Like they weren't even, they were shameless. But what they had, they had like nice pies there actually. Well, they called pies, they're not exactly pie. And you know, like uh, McDonald's had those, um, has those uh, uh, like pastries with uh, cherry and stuff, right? How do you call those in English? Because we call them kind of pirajok, kind of pie. <laughs> and Rustics had those uh, savory, not with fruits, but with like chicken and some vegetables inside. Boy, those were good. McDonald's actually kind of did something like this too. They had like Italian weeks or something. And they got also those thingies uh, with uh, mozzarella and tomatoes inside. So instead of cherry in this like kind of pastry thingy, there was mozzarella and tomatoes in. Dude, that was so good, man. I was just going there to get that stuff. It was amazing. Like I don't like the sweet pies that much. <laughs> but that stuff, ooh, that was good. That was good. Uh, all right, there we go. Here's the arsenal. <laughs> yeah, it's like the fried crust, basically, and everything inside. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Sorry, like microphone always kind of like with me doing this stuff. <clears throat> not a huge fan of the fruity ones, in general, kind of like sweet stuff. I like, but fruit like with just jam and everything, I don't really like that much. I don't mind though, but. Eh. But like those with like non-fruity stuff, the savory, oof. It's really rare, but those were so good. Yeah, let's see. Can we... I need to get the, the light from... Uh, you kind of can see a little. <coughs> Let me try that. Sure, this light is from the different side, though. I don't think it's going to be visible that much. All right. Uh, uh, let's do this way. So is this actually that amber as it's supposed to be? Will this be enough? I mean, it kind of does. Eh? Whoop. Well, can't really eh, see that much. Yeah, because of the bottle, obviously, too, a little bit. It's kind of hard to, like, show it through, through the cam. It's better with the, with the, real, with the real picture. But, yeah, that's going to be the amber... The ember bitter, and it is pretty bitter, that's for sure. And I like it, I like it. We'll see how my friends will be about it though, because I'm kind of like the only one who likes bitter beer <laughs> mostly. Actually, not the only one, but like in, in our extended group, I guess I'm not the only one. But in the immediate friend group, I'm the only one like that. All right. Yeah, it's underdosing with the dextrose with sugar for sure. So it might end up being not super carbonated. But I'm constantly again trying to stay on the safe side with this. Because I'm always afraid to overdose on the dextrose and get my bottle to pop. So this is 19 uh, bottles. 19 liters. Uh, pretty good, eh? Uh, pretty good, eh? Uh? That's gonna be nice. I left for that one? I don't think so. I think it might be... I think it might be a little bit of a ballsy move and to try to fill another one. What's the level? This one? I think that might be a bit ballsy there. It's like the half of it is pointless to make. Full one... I mean, the level is not... Like, I think it maybe is doable. You know what, let's see. If I see through the pipe that uh, stuff is already going with some, some murky shit, then I gonna... And then I gonna stop and just pour it out, I guess. 
<clears throat> if we manage, then it's good. Um, oh man, I already I washed that shit. Alright, let's get the different one then. Eh? So this one was... Uh, Zero point seventy five. This one is zero point five. How much this one was? I'm trying to remember. I think like three grams. So let's try. Three of these, not full. All right. Okay, the last one I had him straight from the bucket. Well, that's not the very tasty stuff to drink there, that's for sure. That's for sure. Not a very tasty. Not super poggy. <clears throat> All right, let's try to fill the last one then. All right. Maybe I can. On. Careful. The acrobatics already, man. No. No, so far clean at least. Come on. Dude, really? Super acrobatics, basically. Eh, come on. Ooh, I had a fiesta. <laughs> Gotta work for that booze, it's true. Come on. Dude, try it this way. This gets already horizontal there, that's the problem. <clears throat> Bit too much. Yeah, I think it's already waking up the ancient evil at the bottom there. A little bit. But I mean, almost full, not that much of a bad stuff. So I guess, guess that works. Sure if that's, yeah, I guess I'm gonna stay. I'm even gonna get more in. Re. <clears throat> what dude with fingers there? Not good. Can't really hit it out or something. All right, fine. Sure, that will do. Extracted almost stole. All right, twenty then. Twenty out of twenty-three on input. Not too bad. Eh? Not too bad. Eh? I mean, some of the testing. Testing eight probably like later when I was. Eh? Starting when I was ending, and I was showing the the yeast floating. Probably was like around a, a liter total. I guess a bit less. And well, there's still a bunch. Well, not a bunch, but quite. <coughs> sure, if you can see. Okay, I can't because of the light again. I guess. 
Not yet. There is like some at the bottom, but that's already like the the whole layer of uh, dead yeast there. That's not something you want. Not something you want. Not all of it is dead, but mostly. Because the alive one is now floating in the beer. Ooh, right. So, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. Huh? We'll see how it will be as a final product. We will see. I'm gonna do the first test on New Year's, probably. I'm gonna open a bottle or two. Normally, it's nice. Well, at least a week that we're gonna have, right? Uh, 10 days uh, that we... Which day it is today? I don't remember, actually. That we are probably barely gonna have. And, uh, well, two weeks would be perfect, but yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. Alright, where was it? Ah, here it is. <clears throat> My cocaine storage. There's a bunch here. At some time, at some point next time. Probably, is it the one? Mm hmm. Not that, that, that's, you know, that's the actual stuff. I was just testing. Maybe it's just sugar, but that's the good stuff. So, all that I'm gonna be using already. I'll try next time to set things up to do syrup. That's just more proper uh, and better in general. Actually, after you add, if you want to try, do something concentrates like this, the beer concentrate, like beer brewing sets concentrates. Go with the uh, IPAs and stuff that is more bitter, because that one has more uh, hops, and uh, some of the hops you kind of add even while preparing, and you drop even hops in there usually when it's IPA for dry hopping when it's already like fermenting at some point after a few days you just drop it in so it kind of gets more of the hops taste and the thing about hops they are disinfectant so it's harder to get ipa kind of fucked by infecting it especially when you do like everything in like amateur scuffed way like i do right <laughs> without boiling the the sugar syrup and stuff just adding everything uh, then it's better to do something like this. It's more safe from getting some side effects, some side things in. Even though in general, like that, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, it's doable probably, but not that simple to fuck the batch up. <laughs> the worst case, it might just not be um, great survivability, like can't store it for long. That's probably the worst case. Educationally, I kind of want to like improve in educationality stuff, so I'll work on that too. I already read a bunch about this stuff. And I remember people in chat last time recommended me some books to read. Didn't get to that yet, or yet, but we'll see. I still have like a few sets of concentrates to make. I just stored them up on them when the shit fest started, just in case, you know. Uh, so I do still have some of those, uh, and uh, I can at least use those, right, because I already have them. So like January, February, gonna have some batches also, and after that we'll see, I'm gonna try to get the proper brew. So like, you know, malt and everything, we'll see. I'm gonna be small scale probably, just in the pot. Maybe I'll need like a bigger pot for that most likely than I have. And we'll see. And the smaller fermenter also. Which will be good because dealing with this stuff is not that good. Uh takes a lot of space, this boy. Annoying. Annoying to deal with, and let's put it that way. Very annoying. Alright. Okay, so I'm gonna go then call it then. And then I'm going to already like clean everything up here. Ugh, move everything. Alright. 
Oh, good thing I put this thing sit down there. That would be oof, rip my back. Nice sock, nice. That's a good one. Oh, I'm actually gonna check because I have a feeling we probably can't really get it here. I have a feeling that they're not gonna let us get touch a goodie there. Let me check. 